This, this evening of artistic interventions in the archive and flat of George Lukacs is a, is a very good opportunity uh, to, to reflect on um, the contemporary relevance of this very important uh, philosopher. So Lukacs has been in the air over the last few weeks and there have been so many stories, uh, scandals, uh, anecdotes and real discussions about the importance and the significance of Lukács and um, so in the preparation of this exhibition. Okay. And, and despite, despite the fact that uh, uh, there's been an awful lot written about Lukács and uh, about his personality, still as, as we came close to this subject it, it becomes, clear, becomes clear that there's still a very big enigma or mystery mm -hmm. around his life and the times of uh, George Lukács. And uh, you know, if, you, if you look at the artist, the artistic interventions here, they, uh, they reveal or they, they, they attempt to come close to some of the different aspects of this enigma. And uh, the artists who are intervening tonight, the generation of artists who are working and intervening and uh, showing us some of their uh, works tonight have been influenced by the generation of artists, have been taught by a generation of artists who were who belonged to the neo-avant-garde of the 1960s. And that generation, uh, active, being critical and political in the late, in the late 60s, they, in a, as a matter of fact, were not so interested in Lukács. They were not looking at Lukács at that time. They had some others, other influences, some other figures were maybe more important. But they Bella Hambach, for example. Bella Hambach, for example, and uh, they were looking at some more dissident uh, thinkers and writers, and uh, if, if you mention Bela Hamas, it was another enigma in the history of Hungarian art, art, or um, of how, or, or or history of Hungarian culture, of how how did Bela Hamas lose his job, and what was the look at his influence, or what is his his impact on that? And. Um, so, I mean, the, the artists are, are interested, on in the one hand, on on, uh, on the life and times of, of, of George Lukács, and also on on life in communist Hungary, and also uh, in the pre-Second World War period. So, going back into the whole uh, kind of history of his life and the times that he lived through. And uh, this is a very interesting place uh, to do to do that because, in a way, it feels sometimes when you come in here like the clock may be stopped in 1971. You know, when, when he died, so it's very much preserved in situ, which is an interesting uh, context for artists to, uh, to respond to. But obviously Lukács' influence did not stop with his death, and so didn't Marxism die at, uh, in 1989 when communism collapsed, although maybe at the beginning it might have seemed so. And just last week there was a big gathering of Marxism theorists in Zagreb, which discussed again the importance of uh, socialism and the ideas, and uh, it was it was presented as the uh, the biggest gathering of philosophers in Croatia since Praxis School uh, in Korčula. Obviously, pra Praxis School of the of the Marxist philosophers from uh, Zagreb uh, was uh, was very important, and obviously Lukács was a huge influence there as well. And I, mean, Lu Lu I mean, Lukács is very often talked about as uh, the founder of Western Marxism. And um, you know, re really, you know, his reputation is huge and his influence enormous on, on especially the the new left in the West in the 1960s and 70s. And in a way, it's still going on today. This this influence of among of the thought. art historians, perhaps one of the uh, most important followers of Lukács thought in art history is Andrew Hemingway, who is working at University College in London, and he has he's just organising next month a big conference uh, where things will be discussed such as the importance of Lukács for contemporary art. And we were also thinking what might be the influence or what might be the importance of Lukács for contemporary art. Also, also in terms of his, of his theory, so what aspects of his theory might still, might still be relevant or, uh, today and, and especially in the context of contemporary art. And you know, just, just looking at his, his works, the kind of things that were important, obviously his, his idea of reification, the commodity fetish, and uh, also this general idea of, of trying to <coughs> to uh, develop kind of a, a new kind of uh, 20th century or, po or uh, a new kind of Marxist critique to take into account the changes in the capitalist system since uh, uh, Marx was writing. And, um, and also for contemporary art, he's writing on, on a realism and his ideas and the distinction he makes of the appearance and the essence 
are very, very uh, kind of important and apt to, could be translated into contemporary art practice, where we are so used to observe the contemporary art in terms of socially engaged art or autonomous art, some, uh, some which is more uh, inward-looking, personal, subjective, and the socially engaged art which <coughs> refers to political and social issues wider than just uh, personal and we think that this works in this uh, in this these interventions tonight very much also reveal themselves in these aspects of essence and appearance in a way they they relate to different levels of, of social reality and um, so perhaps times. we can start with the uh, with Damashor. so we'd like to say a few words about the about the works and interventions that you'll see this evening and at first sight perhaps uh, he's he's his interventions, which is photographs, show, uh, show some, to some extent some kind of uh, personal and subjective layer of the work, more, uh, more, more appearance in, in their appearance. As we see the artist lying on the books, we see him contemplating, we see his, himself uh, picturing, uh, portraying himself in the art of being overwhelmed by the work of Lukács and also by the space where we are today. And, um, we think that in contemporary art, artists can take different roles, and art artists can choose to be uh, not, produ not producers of knowledge. They can uh, decide to um, teach us something, to, to deliver some kind of knowledge to us. I think in this case, I don't think Thomas Schorch is, is really interested in somehow delivering or teaching us some kind no, of knowledge. But what we can find out is that Thomas is hungry for knowledge. He wants to find out more. He wants to contemplate on the work of Lukács. And he, want, he wants to engage with the archive and also in the other photographs which he exhibits here and the series of three, we see him in conversation with the uh, most famous and most important um, disciple of Lukács, Agnes Heller, and uh, we can see that this conversation has lasted. It is a sequence, there is a duration involved in this contemplation about the importance of Lukács and uh, in the work of Tamas. There's another important aspect that, that when when Thomas had the idea of doing this project, he also invited, and brought in other people, brought in other artists to also share in, in this, uh, this evening of interventions, which brings quite an important kind of social dimension to the project. So the work reaches, and the influence of Thomas reaches to, 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 to all of us in, cre in creating this event tonight. But he also told us some more personal stories, which maybe yeah. we could yeah. also share with you. So I think that one of the works is related directly to, to, to the influence of Lukács and the young Tamas <laughs> And uh, so there, there was the, we, were, we found out that Tamas was, was uh, interested in walking along the Dan Danube. He wanted to come up and see Lukács himself while he was alive, but he was never allowed. Each time he rang the bell, they said, George okay. Lukács is busy, he's working. And in the end, it was too late. And, um, but then the prehistory of the fascination or admiration for Lukács lasted to the childhood when uh, Thomas Schorr saw his father on the 1st of May, the parade, carrying his toolbox, and in it he carried the uh, books by Lukács. So maybe there is some element of psychoanalysis needed in Thomas Lukács' fascination, <laughs> Thomas Thomas Schorr. Schorr's fascination with Lukács, but there is also an element of this... Uh, I mean, psychoanalysis has also been something which immediately springs to mind if you, you know if you open uh, Lukács' short um, notes for an autobiography. Uh, that, you know, it's, it's obviously a very rich treasure trove for thinking in terms of psychoanalysis about the young Lukács. And there have been several books and uh, scholarly articles written uh, about the young Lukács from a psychoanalytical position, a kind of Freudian position, looking, for example, at his relationship with his mother, which was quite... Uh, problematic and um, also with other family members and, and this this went on uh, and also has been uh, seen in his relationship with women with girlfriends and and uh, his his two wives and um, you know people have, have maybe more generally not just in terms of psychoanalysis you can look at it seems a very important factor in Lukács about how how these this uh, this these women affected him and had an important part in the development of his work and uh, and uh, his career, really. 